Hello everyone. I just wanted to do a quick little video commenting on some controversy that's floating around the internet right now about uh, this exhibit going on in the Holocaust Museum in Florida. So right now they've got a an exhibit that showcases uh, George Floyd art. So this is a controversial figure and so people have a lot of opinions about it and so I want to go ahead and talk about this for just a moment what the implications are from an artist's point of view. So um, for starters uh, let's kind of air out some of the details around George Floyd. So uh, you know he's kind of like a sacred cow now. It's hard to say anything about him. When I first saw what happened to him on the news uh, I was appalled uh, I, I couldn't believe it and uh, you know well, I say I couldn't believe it but I know a lot of horrible things happen in the world so I could believe it but you know you understand what I mean uh, this guy's uh, due process was appeared to be absolutely uh, foregone and, and it looked like from the video clips I saw it looked like he was just murdered in cold blood a guy kneeled on his neck until he died which is absolutely horrendous now there's a couple of issues here that we have to break down did was George, George Floyd murdered we don't know for one thing I can tell you that this Derek Chauvin guy that kneeled on his neck um, I I can't think of any good reason for him to kneel on this guy the way he did after seeing the videos I know that George Floyd resisted kind of you know um, he definitely was on drugs and made a fool of himself, uh, but was there any reason to just sit there and kneel on him like that as long as he did? Uh, absolutely not, that I can see of. And, you know, a lot of cops seem to be doing that, and I cannot, I'm not a cop, so I don't know. There's a lot of things that cops do that I don't understand because I'm ignorant. Uh, I'm not a police officer. I don't know the dynamics of the situation or what it takes or of the job, you know? And so, you know, I, I, my judgments can sometimes be ignorant. But I've seen other cops do the same thing, and I just can't understand why they don't just get them in the car. The longer you have a person out um, in, a, in a situation where you're pinned into the ground, the more things that can go wrong. But anyway, I, I wasn't in, in the heat of the moment. I, I'm not a police officer. I'm not trained. I don't know what all goes on. But I've seen other people die the same way. Some of them white. Some of them uh, not. And so was this a, a, a racially motivated murder? There's no evidence absolutely uh, in one way or the other to, to show that this was racially motivated. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, and, you know, what's funny is a lot of people are calling for, for the cop to be, the police officer to be uh, basically just put down for murder without a trial, which is also a violation of due process. So no matter, n neither of these people, no matter what they did, deserve to have their, their due process foregone. Okay. So that would be my statement about that to kind of sum that up. I also think what happened to him was a travesty and a tragedy. And uh, I think that regardless uh, of what happened to him, it was all horrible. And all that needs to work out in court. Uh, he's not an angel. So everybody, you know, talks about him as if he was this perfect individual. But, you know, he didn't deserve to be murdered on the side of the street, if that's what happened to him. Uh, but he, he also was not some just perfect individual that, that the media paints him out to be. Uh, he, you know, held a gun to a pregnant woman's belly and forced his way into her home and robbed her with his friends. Uh, this is a guy with a long criminal history. And uh, by no means is he this perfect, wonderful person that we should all be looking up to. He just was a person that had a tragedy happen to him. And no matter how sad a tragedy is, or how unfortunate a tragedy is, you can't start worshiping a person because something bad happened to them. Okay, and so that, that you know, that kind of goes uh, hand in hand here with what we're talking about here with the Holocaust Museum. So um, this art, this artist comes and he takes pictures of people's faces reacting to George Floyd's death, which I always think is funny. You know, I want to do a piece on identity and art, you know, because I think identity is a very complex and deep subject. And so uh, I think it's funny when photographers, uh, they take pictures of people's faces 
and they're talking about identity. Uh, you know, a person's identity is so much deeper than, than their face. I realize that's what's on your ID for a state ID. Um, but, you know, you are so much more than your face. Your face is part of your identity because your body's part of your identity, but that's some part of your identity that can be altered and you're still who you are. So if something happens to me, God forbid, say I get in a tragic accident and my face gets burned, I'm still me. Um, so I always think that's silly, like you take the pictures of people's faces and that's their identity. I just think it's kind of a superficial look at humanity. And so I also think it's kind of funny, like this artist is taking these people who are probably actors and uh, are models and he's staging these expressions on their faces. Uh, and that's supposed to be some deep, meaningful art. Uh, and then he has these little comments, but beside them that are probably uh, you know engineered for sympathy right and so to me this guy you know he's an artist but is he a good artist I don't know I'll leave that up to you to decide to me it all seems kind of silly and superficial and shallow and um, it also seems to be more like propaganda than art uh, than traditional art what I would call fine art uh, because all this is staged and you have these little comments. Why can't the art speak for itself? Why do you have to have a little quote beside it? Because that's part of the brainwashing, right? And that's what propaganda does. Now, uh, I would also say this. Can he do that? Can he put his art in the, the Holocaust Museum? Some people got really upset about that because you're equating uh, what happened to George Floyd is the same as 11 million Jewish people being exterminated purely for their culture and their ethnicity when there's no proof that what happened to George Floyd was race related or culturally related. Uh, and on top of that, there's no proof that the cop actually did it on purpose. The cop, what looked like to me, and you guys can disagree with me, uh, this is a you know, free country and I, I, I'm willing to debate it and I'm willing for you to change my mind if I'm wrong. I don't wanna have incorrect beliefs. So, uh, you know, but to me it looks like he was just doing a very poor job at apprehending somebody and being very disrespectful of this person's uh, of this person and uh, and treating them like garbage, I don't think he meant to kill him. Just to be honest, just you know, I don't believe it. You know, you can say I'm mean or I'm uh, just a big meanie for that and that uh, I'm evil and I'm racist. But I just you know, I, I you know if it was that way, if that was the truth, th that affects me. You know, you know I hate that it happened. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's not like I need it to be true or false one way or the other. My worldview and my opinions don't hinge on that. So, uh, you know, I definitely believe there are racist, evil people in the world. And so if this person happens to be one, that doesn't refute me or my beliefs in any kind of way. So I don't care. I'm, I'm open and objective about it. So I believe it because I believe it, not because I have to believe it. And so uh, I think what I think is that can he do this? Can they put this in the Holocaust Museum? Uh, can they equate police with Nazis? Yeah, it's free speech. Um, but it's also bad form. Finally, I would just close by saying this idea that police are evil and that they should be gotten rid of is one of the most absurd and ridiculous ideas in the world. Uh, and there's many reasons for that. I mean, without police, uh, you know, <laughs> police are one of the reasons any of us have any security whatsoever, even if there are some many, many bad ones. And I've been... I've written uh, blog posts uh, about my experiences with the police where I was treated really, really horribly by police uh, in in my hometown and in areas surrounding my hometown. And if, you know, if I were not white, I would have assumed that it was because of racism. And I would have assumed that these were racist monsters. But they weren't. They were just regular old monsters. So, um, but here's the thing. Do I want to get rid of all police even though I've been abused by the police? Absolutely not, because here's the thing, you cannot live in a free society without police. You can make laws, but if there's no one to enforce those laws, then there is no freedom. There is no freedom. Um, and I'll just give you a, an example. If you want to have, so let, let's just say that the, the, the left is right and there's just these bigots everywhere. And uh, you want to have a marriage, a gay marriage, let's say. What's to stop a bigot from coming and beating you to pieces and murdering your husband? 
if there are no police. Are you free? Are you truly free? What's to stop someone from taking everything you own and everything you've worked for your entire life when they're just bigger than you? Is that freedom? What's to stop somebody from stealing you and, and, and human trafficking you um, or controlling you if there are no police? So if you can't enforce your laws, your laws that give people and society freedom, and safety then you have no freedom so as weird as that sounds <laughs> you need rules you need laws and you need police to have real freedom all right until next time everyone bye if you like this video please consider subscribing to this channel and liking the video and if you didn't like it like and subscribe even more <laughs>